everyone. We are so excited that you're here. Welcome to E3 Church. As you come in, say hello in the comments. Say hello to the people you know and the people you don't know. Will you get your family together? Sit tight. We are so ready for what the Lord is going to do today. Don't forget to click the share button and post pictures of you with your family and use our hashtag E3 Church. Right after this, we're going to head straight into the countdown, followed by praise and worship and the word from Pastor Lasulo. We are so excited for today and we're so glad that you're here. But before we head into the countdown, I have a question for you. Do you prefer chocolate donuts or glazed donuts? Comment down below what you think and let's head into that countdown. Hello, hello, E3 family and thousands of people watching us around the world. I'm your servant Joseph and I'm here this morning to pray with you and ask God for a time of relief in this pandemic. In the book of Exodus chapter 8, the Bible says that the people of Egypt were going through the same uh, situation, similar situation that we are going through. Um, the, the, there were a lot of frogs that were coming into their homes, into their cities, and they were confined literally in their homes. They couldn't do anything. Now, there, there was one thing that King Pharaoh knew. Even though he was part of the problem, his stubbornness and his cassitrant condition was this, the, the reason why the frogs were coming into the land. But when the, the case became so real, uh, the Bible says that he went to Moses and Aaron and in verse 8, he asked them to plead 
to God on their behalf. The, and, and in verse 15 in particular, the Bible says that there was a relief. Now, I want you to know this. Even though this man, a king, was part of the problem, but there was one thing that brought the situation to a standstill. That was his faith. He developed a kind of faith and knew that God could bring the situation to a standstill. This morning, you and I did not cause this situation like Pharaoh. And so if you and I can develop this kind of faith and join our faith together, we can bring this situation to a standstill. Now let's pray. Spirit of the living God, we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says that we should come to the throne of grace to receive mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. Most high God, there is no time of need than this time. This is our time of need. Millions and people around the world need you this time. We need a time of relief. We are praying for those that are sick to come back to normal. Bring them strength in Jesus' name. For them, O oh God, that have lost a loved one, we are asking of you to bring a time of relief. Give them comfort in Jesus' name. We are praying, O oh God, for them that are depressed, bring them back from depression. We are praying that, Father, anything in the life of our people that has gone wayward because of this COVID, we are retrieving them and we are bringing them back to normal. We are praying for strength. We are praying for your revival. We are praying, oh God, that people will come back to where they were and even better. We are praying for our healthcare workers, oh God. Bring, oh God, them back. Protect them and keep them. I pray that people will see you as you bring healing to our land will see you in a different light we are grateful to you we know that you are god and we know that when your people call you you answer we thank you in jesus name i pray amen good morning ep church
don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. We make a miracle work, a promise keep, light in the darkness. Miracle
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, we come before you this morning through the name of Jesus to acknowledge you as God who is our Father. We are your children. This morning we come before you with this confidence, knowing that we are coming before one that loves us, one that cares for us. Today, Father, we ask you that you may help us to find our hope in you, to find our faith in you, to find our love in you, in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask you this morning that as we meditate upon your word, help us to digest that which you have for us in the name of Jesus, that we might find life, we might find strength to endure this week and persevere in Jesus' wonderful name. We give you thanks and give you praise. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Welcome to E3 Church. Welcome to our worship service this morning, to our E3 family. Uh, we are delighted that you could be here. Our online guest, thank you so much for choosing to worship with us. I'm Pastor Lisulo, the lead pastor of E3 Church in Columbia, Maryland, and I'll be bringing the Word of God to us this morning. As we join together in the Word of God, we are entering part two of our series, Hope is Here. Hope is Here. And this morning, our text comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 13. The Bible says, Three things will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. This verse tells us of three virtues. These are important virtues to life. Faith, hope and love. Our interest this morning is to look at the second virtue that is mentioned by the Apostle Paul in this verse. That is hope. One of the things that you notice in this verse immediately is that the Apostle Paul says these virtues last forever, suggesting to us that the virtue of hope is one that lasts forever. Hope lasts forever. What that means is that hope is endless. It means hope never comes to an end. What does that really mean? Does it mean that we never lose hope? Not necessarily. But what it actually means is that we need hope for life. So these three virtues transcend just the Christian life to life in general. Every one of us need faith. We need hope and we need love to live a better life. Today, as we get into part two of our series, Hope is Here, I want us to go to Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 12. It says, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a dream fulfilled is a tree of life. The wise man, Solomon, begins to help us to understand what hope really is. It is in this verse that we begin to see the definition of hope. Listen to what the Bible says. It says, hope defers makes the heart sick. What does that mean? It means that hope is the state of the heart. So hope is not something that happens outside us. It is something that is within us. It is the state of the heart. Another translation says, when hope is crushed, the heart is crushed. Mm, that's quite profound. How many of us have ever witnessed an accident that has been quite bad? And God forbid that any of us is involved in such. 
But sometimes you would find that when people are involved in an accident, their legs might be crushed, but they are still alive and talking. Their arms might be crushed, but they are still alive and talking. But the Bible says when the heart is crushed, there is no life. What this simply means, beloved, is that the heart is the center of life. Life comes from the heart. And when we talk about hope, hope is a matter of the state of the heart. Then the wise man continues to say, but a dream fulfilled is a tree of life. What does that mean? When a wish comes true, we are filled with joy. When our wishes, when our dreams come to pass, then we have hope within us. We are filled with joy. So if I may define what hope is, hope is that expectation or a desire for something to happen. It is that desire within us. It is that expectation within us that something is going to happen. And when it comes to happen, then we are filled with joy. We are filled with peace. Hope is very important to life. Hope is very important to life. That's why we are diving into this series, Hope is Here. Our goal in this series is to discover how hope can be accessed. And when we lose hope, how do we gain hope back? Because we need hope to live. We need hope to survive. We need hope for today and not just for today, hope for tomorrow. Because hope enables us to endure circumstances, to persevere the challenges of life or to persevere through the challenges of life. My prayer this morning is that we will catch God's heart for us in wanting to impart a virtue that is going to protect us, a virtue that would give us inner strength to go through the challenges of life. You know, there's a, there's a scripture in the book of Job, chapter 17, verse 18. It says, this was Job that was speaking. It says, my days have passed. My plans have failed. My hope is gone. Listen to what he says. My days have passed. Then my hope is gone. So when does hope disappear? When does hope get deferred? When does hope leave us? When we have a sense of loss of days. When we feel like our time is gone. When we feel like we have failed to accomplish the things that we needed to accomplish within a specified time, then our hope is gone. When we feel like we are discouraged because of what is happening, when we feel a sense of loss, then we lose hope. This verse also says, my plans have failed. You know, whenever we have plans and our plans do not come through, or we struggle to believe that it shall come to pass, then we lose hope. Today, God wants us to discover ways that we can gain this hope. How we can capture this virtue that is important to life so that we can go through the challenges of life. You know, beloved, we are going through a trying time. But in times like this, what we need the most is hope. Hope that is living. Hope that will keep us. Hope that will help us to endure and persevere the challenges of life. David said in Psalm 42 verse 11, Why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I want you to observe again. He says, why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God. In short, he's saying, I have no hope. Why? Because my heart is sad. You see, hope is a state of the heart. 
Hope is a state of the heart. When we are sad, we lose hope. When we are discouraged, we lose hope. When we go through challenges of life, sometimes we lose hope. And hope is not just to a selected few. Every one of us, at one time or another, we go through this phase of hope being tested, where we lose hope. So it is important for us to learn, when we lose hope, how do we get it back? How do we get it back? And this morning, I have a passage that I want us to meditate on and draw a few nuggets from there. It's Matthew chapter 14 and reading from verse 22. This is an account of Jesus with his disciples. Jesus and his disciples. And in particular, I want you to pay attention to what happened to one of the disciples as we read the passage by the name of Peter. Matthew chapter 14 verse 22. It says, Immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when they had sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now when evening came, he was alone there. But he was alone there. But the boat was but the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth hour of the watch of the night, Jesus went to them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It's a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command us to come to you on the water. So he said, come. And when Peter had come out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the winds was boisterous, he was afraid and began to sink. And he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Then those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the son of God. Truly, you are the son of God. This is one of those accounts that helps us to understand how we can capture and access hope when we feel like we have lost hope. When we go through trying times, when we go through times of, of challenges, times of difficulties, then we, 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 can, we can learn some nuggets here that can help us to capture our hope back so that we can have a full life. Three things that I want to observe before I make some deductions. Firstly, we are told in verse 22 that Jesus immediately made his disciples get into the boat to go to the other side. But Jesus himself did not go in the boat with them. You know, the first thing that I observe here is that the disciples were made to go through this routing by Jesus. Jesus, knowing everything that would happen, he still asked the disciples to go through this routing. And when they were at sea, they were simply obeying their master who told them to get onto the boat to get to the other side. And while they were obeying the master, a storm hit them. You know, beloved, sometimes we could just be doing what God has asked us to do. And then suddenly we are hit by the storm. The storm hitting us does not mean that we are not walking in the will of God. 
It doesn't mean that we are not Christians. It doesn't mean that God doesn't love us. You could just be obeying what God said to you, and then suddenly you encounter a challenge. That's what happened to these disciples. They were in the will of God. They were just obeying the command of Jesus. And then suddenly they were hit by the storm. I do not know about you, but I believe in this year 2020, I was found among a community of people that started the church last year. E3 Church was launched last year. And while we are just worshiping God and having a wonderful time, suddenly we are hit by this coronavirus around the world. And now we cannot get together to meet. I do not know about you, but maybe you are in a season where you just found a new job and you were so excited because you were praying and trusting God for a job. Or maybe you were trusting God for a child. Or maybe you were trusting God for a vacation. And when it was just time for you to go, and then suddenly you are hit by the storm. Beloved, we need to understand that storms come to everyone. Storms do not mean that you are walking out of the will of God. But you know what? God has devised a plan. And there is a purpose behind us going through the storm. The disciples were just obeying their master and they were hit by the storm. And then Jesus comes walking towards them. And as they see Jesus, Peter reaches out to Jesus. And Jesus calls him and he begins to walk on water. And then suddenly Peter has a second wave of hopelessness. He was hopeless the first time that the winds beat. But when he saw Jesus, he regained his hope because the master was there. And he asked him to call him to come to him. But as he's walking, he begins to sink because he looked at the winds that were beating the water. He lost his hope again. How did he regain it? Beloved, that's what I want to share with you. What do we do when we feel discouraged? Because discouragement causes us to lose hope. What do we do when we face the challenges of life? You know, it's those situations that cause us to lose hope. And the Bible says through Proverbs that hope defers makes the heart sick. You become paralyzed. You lose the inner strength, the will to do, the will to act, the will to move forward. The future becomes bleak. You cannot see where you are going. How do we regain that? I do believe that in this passage, there are a few nuggets that we can learn. Three things, and then I'll be done. Number one, if we are to regain hope, we need firstly to realize the need for God. The need for God. In this passage, in verse 28, the Bible says, And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on water. Peter realized that he needed help. Peter realized that he needed someone greater than him to help him. Listen to what Jesus said in the Beatitude, Matthew chapter 5 and verse 3. I like what the New Living Translation says. It says, God blesses those who are poor and realize their need for God. God blesses the poor and those who realize the need for God, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. You see, sometimes the reason why God would allow us to go through the challenges of life is for us to pause and realize that we need God. God would use these circumstances to draw us to him. So how do we regain hope? By turning 
and realizing that we need help. That we need help. We need God. Secondly, we reach out to God. We need to realize that we need God by reach out to God. Listen to what Peter said. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said to him, come. And when Jesus said to him, come, the Bible says, and Peter stepped out of the boat and began to walk on water. You see, Peter was not the only one in the boat. There were other disciples. But only Peter reached out to Jesus to ask him to call him. You see, if we are going to regain strength, we need to reach out to God. Can I drop a nugget into your spirit? God is waiting for us to turn to him. Sometimes when we go through challenges, it's a way that God wants to draw us to him so that we may turn to him. God is waiting for us to run to him so that he can help us. He says, call unto me and I will answer you. Until you call for help, I will not help you. Yes, there are times that God, out of his sovereign nature, he would reach out and save every mankind and provide food and, and take care of us. But there are certain storms in life that won't go away until we step out and reach out to God. Until we step out and reach out to God. Beloved, could this be a time in our history that God is calling us to run back to him? To reach out to him? Because when we reach out to him, he will save us. Now, what does it look like to reach out to God? What does it look like? You know, most of the times when we talk about reaching out to God, we're talking about prayer. We talk about prayer. And yes, we reach out to God by praying. But today, I want to show you something from Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43 verse 19, it says, See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. I want you to observe something. This verse is saying God is doing a new thing. You see, to reach out to God simply means for us to step out of our comfort zone and embrace the new thing that God is doing. Peter had never walked on water. But now he sees Jesus walking on water, something that had never happened. And Jesus now tells him he could also walk on water. Are we open to change? Change that will bring us into another realm of life. You see, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can think or even imagine. There's more to life than the life that we have lived. How do we regain hope? When we begin to align ourselves with what God is doing. We understand what is God doing in this situation. What is God requiring of us? That's how we reach out to God. We reach out to God by understanding what he is doing. And then we begin to align ourselves with the purposes of God. God is saying, I'm doing a new thing. Are we going to remain stuck in our way of life? Yes, it was nice. Yes, it was good. But what if God is doing a new thing? How open are we to change? You see, the ways that we have lived might be limited. God might have better ways to live. The way that we, we did communicate with one another. The way that we visited with one another. The way that we, we connected with the world might be so different to where God is taking us. 
How flexible are we to allow God to take us to a new realm of life? The moment we surrender to God and allow him to lead us, to guide us, then we regain hope. Why? Because we let go of the past. The Apostle Paul says, forgetting what lies behind. I press on. I press on moving forward. God could be asking us to let go of our past. So how do we regain that hope? Number one, we need to realize we need help. And number two, we need to reach out to God because help comes from God. And then finally, we need to receive God's help. We need to receive God's help. The Bible says Jesus stretched out his hand towards Peter. Peter could have decided not to reach out to Jesus, not to call on Jesus. When Jesus stretched out his hand, Peter could have decided not to allow his hand to connect with the hand of Jesus for him to be lifted out of the water. You know, beloved, what God is saying? We need to surrender. If we are going to regain hope, we need to surrender to what God is doing. Yes, we need to understand what is God doing. By reaching out to him. And then we need to surrender. Listen to what Romans chapter 15 verse 13 is saying. As I'm, I, I, I bring this to close. Romans chapter 15 verse 13 he says. I pray that God who gives hope. God who gives hope. Will bless you. With complete happiness. And peace. Because of your faith. And may the power of the Holy Spirit fill you with hope. God who gives hope. You see, hope comes from God. Today, God is asking us, do you see the need for help? You see, when we get to the point in life where our strategies and our coping mechanism fell us. That's an indicator that it's time to turn to God. When everything that has worked fails us, God says, you can run to me. You can reach out to me. I will give you hope. So the hope that we are talking about here is hope that comes from God. It is that inner strength, inner ability that comes from God. And this verse tells us, how do we get it? It comes to us through the power of the Holy Spirit. God is inviting us to surrender to him. Invite Jesus into our lives. When we invite Jesus into our lives, the Bible says he gives us the Holy Spirit who comes to live in us. And the Holy Spirit who lives in us gives us inner strength. Strength for the day. Not strength that will make us escape the challenges of life. No, but strength that will enable us to endure, to persevere, to go through to the end and become victorious. Listen to me. God wants us to endure. My prayer for you is that you will not remain in this season. You will get to the other side. Because when Jesus told them, you are crossing over to the other side, he knew there was going to be a storm. But it was destined for them to get to the other side. May we get to the other side. My prayer for you is that you will not be swallowed by the challenges of life today. We need help. Let's reach out to God. Let's have faith in God. Let's call on him. Let's allow him to lead us. 
Let's be flexible to adjust, to change, to be transformed into a new life. This morning I want to pray with some people here. Maybe today you are saying, you know, Pastor, I have not received Jesus. I do not know God. I'm just hearing you for the first time. And I'm learning about God for the first time. I want to invite you to give your life to Jesus. Hope comes from God. Hope is that inner peace, inner joy that enables you to rejoice in the midst of calamities, in the midst of chaos, in the midst of difficulties. Everything around you could be going bad, but inside you there will be peace, there will be joy. Why? Because the Spirit of God lives in you. So if you want to give your life to Jesus, I invite you to pray after me and say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I ask you that you forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me with the blood of Jesus. Today, I've heard your word that you are the source of hope. Lord, today I'm going through challenges, but I want to surrender my life to you, that you may give me inner strength, inner peace. Come into my heart. Come and live in me. Make me your child. In Jesus' mighty name, I receive you. Amen. Listen, if you made that prayer, I want you to know that God has heard you. And I'm going to invite you, if you can gain some courage, somewhere on this chat, there is a link for a connect card. Let us know the decision that you made. Connect with us. We want to pray with you. We want to stand with you and encourage you as you continue in your fellowship with the source of all hope, God himself. I want to pray with everyone else. I do not know what was the catch in this sermon to you, but listen to me. God wants us to regain hope. There's a lot that is happening around us, but hope is inside us. When the heart is crushed, there is no life. God wants to heal our heart today. God wants to give us life today. Lift your hand where you are. From the comfort of your home, lift your hand, stretch them out to God. Say, Father, I'm reaching out to you today. Restore hope within me in the name of Jesus. Help me, Father, to trust you. Help me to see what you are doing in my life, in my family, in my community. Amidst all this sickness, the virus that is going around the world. Father, you are doing something and I want to be part of what you are doing. In the name of Jesus, help me, Father, to let go of my past, to allow you to lead me to new places, new ways of life, new ways of connecting, Father, help me to change in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, come upon me. Anoint me. 
for victory. Help me be an overcomer in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Just before we close and get to the announcements, I want to invite us to worship God with our giving. The Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. And this morning, I want us to give out of our love for God. You know, giving is one way that we tell God we trust you. Our hope is in you. You are our provider. You are the source of life. So let's worship him with our giving. There is a link on this chat. Either after the service, if you can see it, you can go back to it and you can use it to give. The Lord bless you. Let me pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for every seed that is being sown into your work. We thank you for every offering that is being offered to you as an act of worship. This morning we ask you that you bless every giver in the name of Jesus. May every need in their life be met in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. I give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. May hope be your portion in this season. God is on your side. God bless you. Hi, thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Chamba. I'm part of the E3 Hospitality Team. I hope you enjoyed the worship experience and the message. Listen, if this is your first time, we'd love for you to fill out a digital connect card that you'll find in the comments. When you fill out that card, you will receive a special gift just from us to say thank you. I hope we'll see you next Sunday. Thank you so much for joining us here at E3 Church. We hope that you were blessed. We're going to leave the comment section open, so just stay and mingle if you would like. Also, do not forget to like our Facebook page and join our Facebook group so that you can be updated on all the announcements and all the things going on here at E3 Church. From E3 Church, thank you for coming and we'll see you next week. Bye.